Please remember there are additional resources and things such as code samples at elithecomputerguy.com. So if you're watching one of these classes and you need to know what code looks like or if you need the links to the resources that we're using, please go to elithecomputerguy.com and take a look at our class posting there. Also, please remember that free to the end user classes are not actually free. It costs me a lot of money to be able to provide this type of content. So if you could click on the donate button and throw in a couple of dollars every month. This will help me be able to continue to provide you this type of material. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli, the computer guy, and today's class is going to be on loops in Python. So up until this point in the series, we've learned about variables in Python. We've learned about if else statements in Python. So now we are going to be learning about loops in Python. This is one of the key components to any programming language. And a loop is basically exactly what it sounds like. You are going to continuously loop through and do something until a condition is met. Uh, again, as I've talked about many times, before. Uh, if you need any additional resources, please go to w3schools.com. They have documented all of this stuff in, in a much better way than, frankly, I ever will. If you go to w3schools.com and you take a look at Python loops, you'll see that there are two types of loops within the Python programming language. So an important thing to understand is in different programming languages, uh, they do loops differently. Uh, uh, so in other programming languages, there may be more ways to do loops than what there is in Python. But in Python, there's basically only two ways to do a loop. You do a while loop. So basically what a while loop is you continuously loop through again until a condition is met. So you continuously do something until some condition is met and then you break out of the while loop. Then you have a for loop. What a for loop allows you to do is it allows you to iterate through collections. So again, if you're used to other programming languages, this is one of the places where you may have a bit of a hiccup, is that arrays are not built in by default into Python. So we've talked about modules before. We haven't gotten into modules yet. That is coming soon. But we've talked about modules before. And one of the things I've talked about before is if you want something as simple as a random number, you have to import a module into your script, right? If you want to have your, your script sleep for one second, you actually have to import the time module into your script. Well, if you want real arrays, real arrays, you actually have to uh, import the NumPy uh, module into your script, and that gives you real arrays. Well, here's a thing that I honestly didn't think about till I got into uh, to doing Python is an array is actually a really powerful thing in the programming world. You can do a lot of sophisticated things uh, when it comes to math and numbers when you're dealing with arrays, where many times you don't actually need all of that power. And so what Python does is it gives you something called collections that look a lot like arrays do most of the things you're going to need an array to do, but are definitely not arrays. Uh, so there is a list. So list, uh, think about it as a normal array, like if you're dealing with PHP or another programming language, where there are indexes in a list, and within those index is a value. Uh, so we're going to have uh, an example where basically I have attendees in a class, and so there will be multiple names, so Sue, Bob, Phil, and Barb, or whatever else, and each one of those names will be at an index value in a list. So that is a list, and you can iterate through that list to do whatever it is that you need to do. Again, one of the examples that I'm going to show you is you can have a list inside of a list iterate through, and then basically do a search. Remember when we did the if-else statements and we used strings? So what I'm going to show you is we're going to have this attendance list where it'll say the person's name, their gender, and their shirt size. And then what you can do is you can iterate through 
each one of those and say, I only want the records for girls. I only want the records for people with a large t-shirt size, uh, something like that. So you can actually have lists within lists. If you're, again, if you're used to other programming languages, um, there are named key arrays. So if you're dealing with a, a normal array, uh, you have an index value. So the index is zero to whatever right? And you just have a number. Sometimes you want to be able to name that key so that you can access it. That's called a named key array in other, in other programming languages. In Python, that is called a dictionary. And so you have a dictionary where you have the name of essentially the key, and then you have a value. Now that's another collection within the Python world. There's also tuples and sets and frozen sets. <sighs> And a whole bunch of stuff we'll get into uh, in other classes to make this, uh, you know, make it so you can understand what's going on. But the main thing that I want you to think about with these for loops is this allows you to iterate through a collection. A collection may be a list. A collection may be a dictionary. A collection may be a set. This allows you to iterate through all indexes in that collection and do something based off of whatever programming that you do. So basically you have the while loops and the for loops. Now when I was doing research for this class, I did see some people say that there are actually three types of loops in Python. So depending on your instructor and then depending on who's going to be giving you a test, there may either be two different types of loops or three different types of loops. The third quote unquote type of loop is something called a nested loop where you have a loop inside of a loop. So you could have like a for loop where you're looping through, let's say the, these records, and then when you get to each record, you may then do a loop while you're on that record, break out, and then go back to the for loop, something like that. I'll show you how to do that in, in other classes because that gets a little bit more complicated. I don't want to make your brains melt today. Um, so basically, there's two types of loops. There's a while loop and there's a for loop. And then if your professor is really a stickler, technically, I suppose you could say there's a third type of loop called a nested loop. So now is your first experience with while loops in the Python programming world. So this is a very simple while loop here, but it should explain to you how a while loop actually operates. And one of the things that you'll find in the programming world is if you understand the basic concept of what's going on here, the much more complicated scripts that you'll be writing in the future, really, they just take a little bit more time. They take a little bit more energy to think about, but they're actually pretty simple if you understand what's going on. So basically with this, what we're going to do is we are going to count from 1 to 10, and we're going to just simply print this out on the screen. That's all we're going to be doing today. So x equals 1, right? So we're going to create the variable x like we've done in the past. We're going to make it equal to the value of 1. So it'll be the value of 1 plus it will be the data type of int. Data type doesn't matter today, but just keep that in mind. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to the while loop. So while x is less than or equal to 10. And do remember with these conditions, we talked about this with if else statements before, this becomes much more important when you start dealing with loops. There is a massive difference between less than 10 and less than or equals 10, right? Less than 10 would be 9. 9 is less than 10. 9.999999 is less than 10. 10 is not less than 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to count from 1 to 10. So while x is less than or equal to 10, we do the colon, then we're going to print out. Print, and we're going to use an F string here. So we talked about concatenation in that variable class. That's where you uh, are able to take text that you write, put in variable values, and basically write something to the screen or write something to a, some other data store. Uh, we're going to do the F string. So F, single quotation mark, and then we're going to say iteration. So iteration is literally going to get printed on the screen. Space, squiggly bracket, and then the variable name close squiggly brackets. So the variable value, so we'll say iteration one, iteration two, iteration 10, right? Then we close, uh, uh, the, we close uh, the, the single quotation mark, we close a parenthesis, and so that's what it's gonna print out. And then we come down here and we iterate X up. Uh, by one uh, by one. Um, so again, in different programming languages, this is done differently. In a lot of programming languages, you can do x plus plus, and that will that will simply add one to x. They don't have that in Python. Why? I don't know. 
It's just how it is. Again, that whole thing with syntax. Again, this is where I want to remind you with programming languages, learning new programming languages is a pain in the butt. It's simply, you know what to do. All I want to do is iterate by one. How do I iterate by one in this language? In Python, you do x plus equals one. So basically, x equals x plus one. That's what we're doing here. And so you could do x plus equals 20. x plus equals 0.1. You could put whatever you want in here. But again, we are going to be iterating by one. So we simply do x plus equals one. So what's going to happen is x equals one. It's going to say iteration one. We're going to add one to x. So it'll be two. It'll loop through iteration two. x will be three. Loop through all the way until you get to 10. And so uh, if I hit the uh, the run button up there, uh, and you can see iteration one, iteration two, iteration three, all the way down to iteration 10. Pretty dirt simple, pretty easy. And again, that's how programming is. I will remind you though, right? This is where you can get into trouble with while loops. While X is less than 10, if we run this through, we'll get to iteration nine. So this is one of the things that can screw you up. Again, in programming, you can have something that technically works flawlessly. No debugger will ever catch it because it does exactly what you told it to do. But what you told it to do might be wrong. That's one of the things you have to be careful about with these conditions, especially when you create longer and longer scripts. When you take information from this loop, pass it to something else, it then gets passed to something else, it gets passed to something else, it gets passed to something else. All of a sudden, a very simple error, like not putting in a less than or equal to or whatever else, can become a much bigger problem. So I know right now you're looking at this, you're like, yeah, oh, that's no big deal. I would, I would just fix that in a heartbeat. Oh yeah, here you just fix it in a heartbeat. But again, imagine if you have a script of 500 lines of code when you're looping through doing things and you muck up, you, you error out by like one iteration, uh, that could be a big problem. But that is all there is to a basic while loop. So since you understand the basics of while loops, I have a little script here that simulates a problem that you might run into. So basically, this is a little script to tell you how long it will take you to repay a debt based off of a certain a monthly payment. Now, this right here is the type of thing I want you to be thinking about doing and I want you to be doing after every class from now now on as you start to learn more and more uh, about Python. One of the big problems that I see with many people that start to learn coding is that they learn programming based off of the idea of passing a test, right? They know what something called a lambda function is. They know how to do a function. They knew how to do loops. They knew how to do lists and dictionaries. They know how to connect to a SQL server and do API calls and all that kind of stuff. You put them, you know, in front of a piece of paper and have them do a scan or whatever it is the kids do nowadays, and they will get an A+. And you're like, wow, you are a great programmer. So then you say, hey, can you build me something? Again, not complicated, not telling you to, to build, you know, Facebook or Twitter or something really sophisticated. You're just like, oh, you know, my little company just needs this little app to be created to, I don't know, track payments or something else. And then that person that earned an A throughout all of their schooling is like, the I, I don't, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I know what a function is. Like, yeah, great. I don't care what a function is. I care whether you can solve my problem. So one of the things I really want you folks thinking about as you're doing these classes, again, from here on out, you know what a variable is, you know what an if-else statement is, you're now learning what a loop is. From here on out, once you get done with these little classes, I want you to think about either a real problem or simulating solving a real problem and think about what you know now and build a little, again, it doesn't have to be huge, a 20, a 30 line script to actually solve that problem. I want you thinking about programming that way. Again, what a 
technology professional really does, we don't really code. We don't really run cable. We don't really do sys administration. What do we do? We solve problems with technology. If you know how to solve problems with technology, you'll have a very good career. If you're very good at passing tests, well, I don't know. We'll see how it goes for you. So anyways, so this, this is just a very simple simulation, but it is the type of thing I want you folks to be thinking about. And so imagine with us, you take a loan from your parents. So there's no interest in here. So you could add interest. After this class is done, maybe you could add interest in here. Anyways, there's no interest in here. Basically, what we're going to say is, what is the total debt that you're taking on? Your parents are helping you to buy a car, let's say for $10,000. Uh, you're going to make a payment of $133 or whatever every month. And so the question here is, how many months is it going to take you? Or actually, how many years? How many years is it going to take you in order to pay off that debt? Very simple, but again, an actual real-world problem. So with this, uh, basically, in this while loop, we are going to be subtracting the payment from the total, right? And so basically, we want to continue this while loop as long as total is greater than zero, right? Because that's what we care about, right? As soon as the, uh, the total amount that is owed goes below zero, we don't want to continue the loop anymore. We don't care, right? So that is what we're going to be doing the condition over. So while total is greater than zero, colon, print, f string, owed, colon, and then the value for total. So that's a current value of total. Then we're going to change the value of total. So total equals total minus payment. So when the first time we go through this loop, it'll be $10,000, $10,000 minus 133, and that will be the new value uh, for total. The next time it goes through, it's 9,887. Uh, I think that's it. I, look, I'm an IT person. I'm not great at math. The next time it goes through, total will be 9,808. No, $9,867. All right, minus 133, that will be the new value of total, whatever that is, right? Every time this loops through, so we start at months equals zero, every time this loops through, we are going to add one to month, right? So the first time we come through this, so the first time we print this out, no payments have been made yet, so it sets at $10,000. And so that's the zero month. The first month, 133 will be paid, then the next month, and the next month, and the next month. And so basically all it's going to do is it's going to loop through. Then we're going to uh, create a years variable. So years is going to equal months divided by 12. So we're simply going to take the months that we've counted up, we're going to divide that by 12, and then we're going to use an F string, paid off in whatever the value for years is, years. Pretty simple there. If we go through and we hit the run, again, we'll notice if we start all the way up at the top, starts at 10,000, 9,867, 9,734, blah, 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 keeps going all the way down. And what you can see, because I didn't cut this off because I want this to be simple, paid off in 6.33333 years. So if you have a $10,000 debt, and you pay $133 a month, it will take you 6.3 years in order to pay that off. Again, why this can be useful, it's gonna be like, wow, 6.3 years, that seems a little bit long to me. What if I just, what if I can add an extra uh, 30 bucks a month? Instead of paying $133 a month, I'm gonna pay $163 a month. If I hit this to make it go, I can go all the way down. That is now paid off in 5.16 years. So basically, if you pay an extra $30 a month, you're taking off an entire year off of your payment schedule. Again, if you go up here and, uh, you know, I don't know, you try to, try to, you know, pay even more money, you can hit 212. 
and that'll take you four years to pay off, right? And so again, that, that's kind of like a simple program that actually gives you something of value that might be useful for you to figure out. Again, this can be very useful for you if you add in, again, extra credit, you go home. Uh, if you add in uh, an interest payment to this or an interest rate, so imagine it's 12% per year. So every time, or, you know, every time you go through here, you actually add to the total an interest amount and see how long that takes uh, for, for you to add things up. Uh, that can be a pretty useful thing for you. So anyways, this is kind of what a while loop looks like. Again, more when you're actually trying to solve a problem. You have the variable values, again, a total, a payment, a number of months. You have to think about what variable value do you actually want to do the conditions against, right? As again, before, when we simply did the while loop, we were simply iterating, so we did the condition against x. We only wanted to go 10 times. We don't care about that here. We don't actually care. We want to know the number of months. We don't want the condition to be the number of months. What we want, to do, what, what we want is the condition to be the total. So when the total goes below zero, and that's when we want this loop to stop. So this is a while loop that looks a little bit more like how you'll actually be solving real problems. So now I'm going to show you how to iterate through a collection with a for loop. So this up here, attendees equals this. This is what we call a list. So again, in Python, this isn't an array. An array is something else we're not dealing with today. This is a list. So at index zero is the name of Tom. At index one is the name of Sue. At index th uh, three, uh, or two, I'm sorry, is the uh, the name of Fred, and at index uh, three is the name of Tim. So whenever you're dealing with lists, list dictionaries, any of these sets or collections, uh, the first index value is always going to be zero. Again, one of the big things in the technology world is sometimes you start counting at one, and sometimes you start counting at zero, and why? Who knows? Who knows? It's just, it's just how it is. When I got my MCSE back in 2000, there were literally times when you would be working on one system, and in order to do the configurations, some parts of the system would start at counting of one, and some parts of the system would start at counting of zero. And when you did the test, you would actually, you would have to remember, okay, the first of this is zero, and the first of this is one, so the third of that is actually going to be two. It's, it's a mess. It's just how it is. It's just how it is. So anyways, attendees, this is a list. Index zero is Tom. Index one is Sue. Index two is Fred. And index three is Tim. Uh, but with this, when we do a for loop, we can iterate through any type of collection in the Python world. Again, lists, dictionaries, sets, tuples, frozen sets. We'll deal with that kind of stuff later. We're just dealing with a good old fashioned list today. So whenever you create a list, you have the square bracket, uh, the value within the list, if you have string values, have to be within either single or double quotation marks, you separate each value by a comma, and that's how you have all those values. Uh, then we do what I normally call just a 4x loop. Uh, so this is fine with simple, programs. I'm going to show you how you can change this in a second. But basically, if you just need to iterate through a list really quick, and it's a simple, stupid program, I just generally say just 4x. So 4x in attendees. So basically, what we're saying is for each item in the attendees collection or list, we're simply going to print out that name, that index value. All right. So if I then go and I print this, we can see it prints Tom, Sue, Fred, and Tim. So basically, again, for each item in that list, print it out, go to the next line, and it prints out here. Uh, so this works. This works, and it's fine technically. Now, once you get into uh, more complicated scripts, again, you start doing 100 line, 200 line, 1,000 line uh, code scripts, uh, doing 4x might start to get very confusing because you forget what you're actually interacting with. The important thing to understand here with this, this 4x, is Python doesn't really care what you name 
name this, right? You can name this whatever you want. Basically, you are creating a name for this index within attendees. So if I wanted to make this something a little bit easier so I could remember, I could do for name in attendees, print name, right? So for name in attendees, print name, and then I run the script. And again, Tom, Sue, Fred, and Tim, you get the exact same results. So the important thing here, and again, whenever I'm doing scripts in the future, whenever I'm showing you things, again, a lot of times I'll just default to 4X because it's a lot easier. But again, if you're making something more complicated, just realize this, this can simply just be a, a, a name value. So you can do so for name, so for, well, you're always using attendee, maybe attendee instead of attendees for something else. And then you just call it, later for whatever it is that you're trying to do. And so this is all you're going to be dealing with, uh, with a for loop. Do not worry. <laughs> you're going to be dealing with so many for loops going to the future. Don't feel like I'm shortchanging you here. You're going to get sick of for loops in no time at all. Now, in this example, I'm simulating pulling in values from some type of data store. So you can store data in what is called a CSV format. It's called a comma separated value format. Uh, and basically, you can simply store that into text files. So a lot of people think when they're going to be creating Python scripts and they need to be writing data somewhere or reading you know, data from somewhere that they have to be using some type of database. And to be clear, databases are a great way to go, especially if you're trying to scale up your app. But many times you don't, you don't need a big old database in order to be able to interact with your data. You can literally just save to a normal text file and pull from that text file to do whatever it is that you're doing. When you do that, you're going to be using normally what's called a CSV file or a comma separated uh, value file. And so with this, it looks kind of like an Excel spreadsheet kind of sort of if you look at it the right way uh, we're basically uh, the first column for this would be the people's names the attendees names the second column would be their genders and the third column would be something like their t-shirt size so again especially think about this you know if you have a small office so let's say you have 20 people uh, in your office and you're going to do some kind of office party and you just I don't know you need to do some some kind of correlation or whatever uh, you could simply use a, a text file uh, uh, put all their information into a text file in this comma separated value format and then you know do whatever kind of data checking that you want to do uh, that type of thing so anyways so we have these attendees here now let's say i want to know all the girls for the attendees uh, so again maybe oh maybe we're sharing rooms who knows it's the modern world. Who knows what people are doing? But we just want to know, okay, we just want to see who all the girls are. So what we're going to do is we're going to say 4x in attendees. So attendees is a list, but you'll notice these internal brackets. So each one of these is actually a list within a list. So you know where I showed you before with the comma separated value or with the list where it was like Tom, comma, Sue, comma, whatever. So you can actually have a list, comma, another list, comma, another list, comma, another list. Right, you can have that type of thing uh, with with Python, and so we have these four attendees, and I just simply want to know who the girls are. So four x in attendees. So x index zero, index one, index two, index three. These are these are all index values. So for each one of the the, the values at an index, if girl. So remember when I showed you how to do the if statement for if uh, a text is in a string right? So if girl is in X, so is girl here, is girl here, is girl here, is girl here. If it is, print X. So we're simply going to print out that entire line. Again, we're not going to make this too complicated at this point. So what I can do is I can run this. And so we can see the two girls, Sue, girl, large, Barb, girl, small. Right. And so that shows us the two records that we have that are girls. If I want to close this out again, uh, if I was looking for people with small t-shirts, let's say, so if small and X, when I go through, when I actually hit run, Bob is a boy and a small t-shirt. 
Barb is a girl in a small t-shirt, and so that gives us that. Again, if you want to get more complicated, if small in x and girl in x, you could run this, and it'll print out you only have Barb, girl, small. And again, this is something that might be useful for you, you know, not just 20 attendees, but if you have 100 attendees or 200 attendees and you're trying to figure out something specific, uh, this can be a very simple way of doing that. Um, and again, it just kind of gives you an idea of the real world uh, about how, uh, again, these kind of like for loops can actually work, especially when you start putting in things like if statements, um, you know, for whatever it is that you're looking for. So there you go. Now you know how to do loops in Python. So I showed you how to do the while loop where you simply iterate up. I also showed you the while loop again where you're trying to make some kind of payment scheme so it'll continuously loop through um, until uh, the, uh, the, the, the total has been paid off. Uh, we then did the for loops. Again, I showed you how uh, essentially to iterate th through one of these things called a collection in the Python world. So I showed you a list uh, and then I actually showed you then a list with in a list or lists within lists and how to be able to iterate through those uh, to be able to pull out specific records that you're interested in. Again, with a lot of the stuff in Python, it's pretty simple. It's always funny. Like I always think about that with, with, with people that are learning programming or want to learn programming. And they're like, Eli, but Eli, I'm not that smart. And what I keep trying to tell people, you don't got to be smart. You do have to be precise. Again, when I was doing classes here in Asheville, so I did a number of classes here in Asheville teaching people how to program uh, with, with lab computers and that type of thing. And one of the things that I kept telling them is you do not have to be smart. You do have to be precise. If you don't put a colon in, it's not going to work. If you don't indent, it's not going to work. If you do any of these number, th number of things, right? If you forget what you called your variables, it's not going to work. But I really want you to think about that. Is that intelligence? Is that smart? Or is that precise? <laughs> Again, it's one of those things to really consider like, oh yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, you don't have to be too smart to do this. You just, you know, again, actually have to be precise with what you're doing. Uh, and I think if you realize that, it'll take a lot of stress, you know, off of your shoulders uh, as you're trying to learn uh, Python or basically any subject in technology. All of this stuff is relatively simple if you understand the fundamentals of it and really build up from there. Um, so yeah, I don't know. That's really all there is uh, for the class today. Pretty simple. As always, I enjoy teaching this class and look forward to seeing the next one.